I'm back. I changed my outfit for this video because I filmed three videos in one day, but I didn't want to wear the same thing. And if you missed it, I created a playlist because I'm going to react to every episode of this series. So go ahead and click onto that. This is another episode of L Street. Shamika and Tamika TV uploaded a video called Sometimes Mothers and Daughters Don't Go Together. Episode three. Are y'all ready to react? <laughs> Cause I am. Let's get it. They say the first thing that a child hears is his mother's heartbeat. From the first flutter, the first kick, it's supposed to be the start of something beautiful. A bond that should last for forever. But what if shit don't go according to plan? And you're born into a situation that is going to take you years to figure out. Mm. Now try adding love in that equation. How do you love and project a feeling that you never felt in the first place? That's the problem. See, what people don't want to talk about is, when you grew up a sad child, the only thing that happens is, you become a sad adult. And it doesn't matter what direction you choose. If you choose to stop the cycle and create something new in your life, something different than what you're used to, you still have that sadness in your heart because of your upbringing, because of the trauma, because of the relationships that is supposed to show you what love is, but didn't. You're still a sad child coming into a sad adult. You know, this, um... This episode here is not going to be easy for me at all. Um, this is like a part of my life that I keep really guarding. Girl, I got to stop you because I like your sweaters. Uh, I like the sweater you got on right now too. I still, I, I'm still processing um, a lot of things when it comes down to my mother. And um, it's some days where I'm, I'm, I'm in tears and I'm crying so bad because like I miss my mother. And not my mother per se, but the imagery of what like a mother-daughter relationship should be. You know, that's what I miss. Um, my mom, she didn't have it easy. Uh, you know, none of us do. And that's why sometimes I can't be as empathetic um, it's probably I should, because as I've been growing up, it's like I've seen people from all walks of life, you know what I mean? And we all have our bad moments. We all have our times where we don't know if we're going to make it, you know what I mean? But that can't be, you know what I'm saying, an excuse to, to, to give up and just walk away from your kids, mm. you know? And that's like the biggest thing that I, I deal with mm. when it comes down to my mother. Like, I know there were certain things that my grandmother took her through, I get that. You know what I'm saying? And I know there were certain things that, you know, life took her through, I get that. But one thing about life and parents and things like that, it's like, it's never gonna change. You know what I mean? Like, all of our families are gonna have that one person that have a hard time dealing with life. Right, right. But then, you know, at the same time, like, I don't feel like that should be an excuse to bail out on your children. You know? it's, not an ex it's not an excuse, but it is a reason. Especially when you battle addiction, because addiction is a disease. It's just very unfortunate and very sad when you continuously choose your addiction over your children, knowing what it's doing not only to yourself, but to your family. I don't have that disease, and I don't know how it feels, but I know how it feels to be around it. Just to give you a quick background on my life. I have six cousins, first cousins, that are heroin addicts. Four of them I consider my brothers. And my best friend of 19 years also battled addiction and passed away from this. So being that family member and that loved one that had to be around that, all around me was not okay and it fucked me up. So as a parent, choosing your addiction over your children, yes, there's, there's reasons behind it because of your disease, but you still have a choice. You have a choice to go to rehab. You have a choice to change your life around. You're just gonna have to fight that battle every day, but it's worth it. Your kids are worth it. Sam, because I don't think that people realize like <clears throat> the, 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 the shit we have to grow up with. Mm. 
learning how And that's even worse when it's your parent. That's worse. Love. Like sometimes I couldn't even fucking love my wife properly because mm. I'm looking at her as a maternal figure and not my wife. So I'm expecting for her to do certain shit that, you know what I'm saying, maybe my mother would have did. You know, I, I don't know if, if it even makes sense, but I just it know makes that, sense. you know, it affects you. It makes me question people. Because the way that I look at it, I'm like, damn, dog, if my mother could walk away from me, like, what, what the fuck is a female? Mm. It's fucked up when your father does that to you. But your mother, though, your mother who carried you for nine months, went through the labor pains of birthing you to be the first person in life to show you what love is turns their back on you? I can't even imagine. I grew up with great parents, loving parents. I don't know how that feels like. that I feel like when it comes down to her like I feel like it's never gonna go away like I, I, I go through life I, I do the best that I can you know right. what I'm saying I use her life as a blueprint of what not to do you know what I'm saying but it still don't make make you feel any more whole because you turned out to be a good individual mm. you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. like you still deal with this emotional shit that that would never go away it would, it would never fucking go away. And, that, and that's the thing that people don't understand. I understand. I don't know how it feels like, but I get it. You're always gonna feel that emptiness inside. And I don't think it's gonna ever go away. I feel for you, girl. All right, let's hear Shamika's story. Let's know a little bit about you, girl. I don't even know, like, where to begin because speaking about my mom is, like, something that's really touchy for me um even though my mom is still living it's like she's not here even though she is here if you understand what i'm saying and that's like something that me and my wife get into it about all the time because mm -hmm. she lost her mom i was gonna say i already know where this is heading she lost her mom so she wants you to know that at least your mom is here. You can change things. You can change that relationship. You can make it better. Do not take it for granted because she doesn't have that opportunity anymore. But I also get you, Shamika. Like, you don't know the shit that I went through with my mom and how tough it is. It ain't as easy as I would like for it to be. You know? My mom is here and I know she'd be telling me that like, you know, you should not, you know, be this way towards her or feel, have this certain type of feelings because, you know, when she's not here, you're going to miss her. And I understand everything that she's saying and I totally agree with her. But it's like my mom suffers from mental problems, so she has mental issues and it's really, really, really difficult. And it's something that my family deals with. And right. Having to deal with a person that has mental issues who doesn't even realize that she has mental issues is something that is like even more difficult than just dealing mm. with somebody who has mental issues and accepts that they have mental issues. So, mm. And when you deal with someone who does have mental issues and she's not saying exactly what it is, it could be mental disorders, mental illnesses. That's something that's very difficult to handle because you're trying to be understanding of their sickness, but at the same time, you don't want to ignore your feelings neither because you allowing them 
to treat you a certain way can also be a form of abuse, especially when the person with the mental problems do not understand or chooses not to believe that there's something wrong. It's like she's here, but she's not here. And it's like I'd be wanting to have that bond and that relationship with her, but it's like I'll be speaking to a brick wall sometimes. Mm. It's like when I'm trying to explain things or have a conversation with her, it's like she's not there receiving it. And it always goes back to her or something about her or whatever it is that she may be doing. So it gets kind of... It can be very narcissistic. Crushed. So you feel dismissed, ignored, as if your feelings don't matter. And to deal with that at times, so I'd rather just not even deal with it at all, to be honest. Mm. Um, I feel like my mom losing her father, you know what I mean, um, played a big part in her uh, as a woman that she is today, like, because I feel like she's really dependent on men. And all through my life, like, I've never really seen my mom be single. Like, she always has to have a partner, like a man, in her life. And that takes away a lot of the focus from our relationship and the things that she's supposed to do as a mother for her children. Mm. And what kind of men are these? You know, they obviously did not work out for a reason. If these men actually care about these women with children, they would understand that these kids come first. You should want your partner to have a good relationship with these kids. And if all you give a fuck about is your feelings, her feelings, that's it. That's all that matters to you. You should not be dating women with children. Yeah, shit is real. Hello. <clears throat> hey, what's up, mom? Not that much. Yeah. I don't... Yeah, I don't know. I've been, like, really busy lately. But I was just trying to catch up with you and see how you been doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've been doing what you're supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't know, Ma. I don't know. Maybe sometime next week or something, but I don't know when. But, yeah, you just need to make sure you focus and keep doing what you're supposed to be doing. It's not that I'm, like, trying to tell you what to do. I'm just trying to make sure you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah, but every time you call me, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. And you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. You know what, I don't, I don't, I really don't feel like dealing with this right now. Like, I'll just call you later or something. Like, I don't know, but I just don't feel like dealing with this right now. That conversation, and I know they're just acting right now, but I'm pretty sure that's how the conversation goes. The way she communicates with her mother is still not the right way because that just sounds judgmental. It sounds like it's criticizing how her mom lives her life. She doesn't intentionally mean to do that. She's just hurt. She's tired, she's frustrated, and she has the right to her feelings. But things are not gonna go nowhere the way they're communicating. my mother the same shit all the time you can't force a person to realize something about them that's something that they gonna have to get on their own like you know and I drive myself crazy stress myself out like trying to make her understand or hope she get where I'm coming from but then she looks at me as though like I'm trying to tell her what to do with her life or you know I'm trying to be the mother but I'm not I just want her to be a mother to me. That's all I really want at the end of the day, you know? I love that they're telling their stories about their mothers, but they're also showing scenes of them being there for each other. And that's what your partner is supposed to do, is to be understanding of your past and to be patient and to try to figure out why you react to things the way that you do and why you deal with things the way that you do. You can't fix the problem, but you have to be their support system. And this is what you see here. Oh, um, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. 
I have two things. Two things left for my mother. You know what I'm saying? And and, and, and that's and that's like a picture. You know what I'm saying? And 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 a dress that I took out her closet when she died. You know what I'm saying? And it's like people to expect for you to be okay. You know what I'm saying? Oh, well, she's in a better place now. You know what I mean? You don't have to worry about where she's at. And granted, her death brought me comfort in a, in, in a sense. Because I did no longer have to worry, like, did she mm. eat? Is she, is she in the house? Mm. Is, is she outside in the storm? Like, I, I mean, her death did bring me some type of relief. You know what I mean? But then what about the shit that I need to be able to be okay as a woman? Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's the things that she never provided to me. And I'd be, and I'd be mad as fuck at her for that. I feel like the relationship with my mom really, really terribly affected me throughout my life. And currently, like, as an adult now, it's something I'm still struggling with because I never really... Okay, I know things are deep, y'all. But I like this type of shit. Real shit. I do want to say this, though. I love the editing. I love the zooming in, zooming out. Because from what I see, you guys are filming yourselves. You guys don't have videographers. And trust me, quality would be so much better if you did hire a videographer. But that does not matter. What matters is the story. And if you present it well, people will listen. So you're trying your best with what you have. And whoever's editing, I don't know who's editing. You might have an editor. I'm not quite sure, but I feel like you two are the type that will do shit on your own. So I think you're doing it yourselves. You guys are doing a good job. Just letting y'all know. Seeing love or <clears throat> known affection or, you know, things like, things like that. So I don't know how to give that to my wife. And that's frustrating for me because my wife's a very loving person and she's very affectionate and it's hard for me to show her the same ways because I never grew up with that. Like, my mom never showed that type of caring and love and affection or asked me how I'm doing or how I'm feeling. Like, so everything was just boxed inside and it makes me, like, nervous to open up and show my heart and let people know or let my wife know how I'm really feeling like I tend to just hide and not really express myself like I don't really express my emotions and loving and caring is something that is hard for me because I didn't get it as a child or growing up or even still now for my mom like I still don't even get that type of love and attention that a child should have from their mother. The last time I physically see my mother, my dad had just died. And Damn. it was really weird. So you lost both your parents, girl? Because I wanted my wife to meet my mom. Damn. Know? Because she was too late to meet my dad. He had already died. And mm. I could think about being so excited to have my wife meet my mom. But then at the same time, I can also remember being so embarrassed because my mother didn't have an address. Mm. So when we got to Detroit, we had to ride around all the drug spots Damn. and kind of like locate my mom. And, and I felt terrible because I'm just like, my wife, this got to be her first impression. Like meet my mom, you know what I'm saying? Like we out here in the slums of Detroit and I'm asking people if they seen my mom, you know what I mean, at all of the drug spots. And but I girl, she loves you though. But she loves you though. It don't matter. She just wants to meet your mother. She's understanding of your situation. And if you guys out there catch yourself being in her shoes and you're with somebody who's like, where do you have me? Like, I don't want to be out here. Like, why you? I don't want to meet your mom out on the streets. Fuck them. If they can't be understanding of your life, fuck them. But from what it sounds like, girl, you got yourself a good wife. I'm a wife out here. You know what I'm saying? In, in harm's way, pretty much. Because you can't just pull up everywhere in Detroit. True. It just don't happen like that. True. You know what I'm saying? But when I finally did see my mom, like, so much stuff had happened at mm. that point. You know what I'm saying? She wasn't the mother that I knew. She was just like, pieces left of the woman that I knew. You know? And it's just like, 
when my when my, I had to introduce my wife to her, it, it was kind of like embarrassing in a, in, a, in, a, in a way, you know, because it's just like I, I didn't want I didn't want her to see. I didn't want her. To, I didn't really. I don't even know what I wanted. I just know that wasn't the introduction that I would like had prayed for. Right. My mom was in. It sucks because the people that are addicted, they're not who they are. All my cousins that I love so much, they're so different now. Because all they care about and all they want and all they think about is drugs. And they will steal from you to get what they want. They will steal your things to sell, just to get money, just to get their drugs. They will hurt you, they will backstab you, they will betray you to get those drugs. But if they were sober, they would never, they would never do that. So her wife got to meet her mom at her worst. That's unfortunate. Yo, when she died, and her last moments, wasn't good moments. So I have all this resentment, I have all of this, this anger built up because she was never my mom, but then I had this sadness because I wasn't there in her last moments. Right. It fucks you up. It fucks you up. I feel like as I get older and I continue to learn and become knowledgeable and accept. You feel guilty when they die from their addiction. There's some things you don't regret because you have to stand your ground. You have to not be an enabler. But at the same time, you feel guilty because you wonder, what if I was there for them a lot more? I was physically there more. What if I talked to them more? What if I called them more? Would that have changed the outcome? By the end of the day though, it's not your fault. The disease is what killed them. Their decisions is what killed them. The things that I've been through in my past and understand that it shapes me into a better person i feel like me and my wife can make it through anything like as long as we just continue to communicate and work through things together and she understands where i came from i understand where she came from so i feel like that makes our bond even 10 times greater there's going to be things from our past that we'll never understand and that's okay i think recognizing that we are flawed and we are perfect imperfections that's the most difficult part. Sometimes we walk through this life and we have no earthly idea on where we're headed. And that's okay too. I would never truly understand the pain that my wife go through. Mm. But one thing that I can say is that I can recognize the pain that she feels. And even though sometimes our pains now might be parallel, we still feel them. Mm. But I know I'm willing to be whatever I need to be to be better for her and for myself. Love is what you make it. We can't let things from our past determine where we're going. And that's facts. You are your own author to your story. If you feel that things aren't going the way you want it to, you can always stop writing and rewrite your story. Ah, right, y'all, I mean, I'm loving this series, girl. Ladies, y'all are doing a good fucking job. All right, you guys, tell me what you thought about this video. Make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. And please hit that bell so you can get notified every time I upload. See you in the next video. Peace.